So we've got John Boffman right behind me. That was a little creepy. Come on over. Um, John, John's right here. Um, he's going to bring us into our intermission, which is exciting. He's a political scientist by day and a radio DJ also by day. Sometimes, yeah. Let's, uh, let's find your height, shall we? Come on up. How's that? How's that? Work? Is that going to work? Yeah. Not if you're shrunken. Okay. Is that yeah. good? Yeah, okay. All right, so on the theme of innocence, I'm going to tell a story about the time that I was mugged. And um, I, I, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, John, is this the time when you live two doors away from a crack house? But it's not. Uh, because that was kind of like when, when a TV crew comes and interviews neighbors, and the neighbors all say, oh, they're quiet, they kept to themselves. That's how it was living next door to a crack house. Um, but this was also not the time when I was almost maybe sort of nearly mugged. That was a time when I was walking down a busy street in Chicago, uh, and it was a warm uh, afternoon, and um, this guy came up to me and asked for money, and I told him I wasn't carrying any money, and I literally was carrying no money at all, and he continued to ask me and had very good reasons for wanting it, and I told him, I simply don't have anything to give. And uh, he uh, then um, says, well, you know, I, I was going to play the nice guy, but I have to tell you I'm carrying a gun. And then I explained that not only do I not have any money on me, but I have almost no money to my name. I have student debt, and I go on and on and on. And he just shakes his head, and he walks away. <laughs> but the time that I'm going to tell you about is the time that I was mugged. And this was a time when I was coming back with a friend uh, from the store. It was 5 o'clock on a Friday, and we were walking past this dog park, which has a big grassy hill where dogs and their owners would play. But this was the day after Thanksgiving. And it was dark, and there was absolutely no one there on the street or in the park, at least until we saw this guy run over to us. And just as my friend and I were under the street lamp, he shoves a gun in my stomach and says, come back over here out of the light. And he asks for our money, and I, I give him a dollar and change that I have, and I open up my wallet. My wallet, as usual, has no cash in it whatsoever. I'm carrying a six-pack of beer, but it's really good beer, and I'm not going to give that up. <laughs> and so I expect he's going to take the wallet and take the credit cards and go away, but he doesn't. And I put the wallet back in my pocket, and he turns to my friend, and she turns over a dollar and change also, and that's about all she has. And then he asks where we're going. And I'm afraid he's going to follow us back to my apartment and rob us there or whatever. And I kind of gesture vaguely. We're kind of going that way. And then he pauses and says, well, OK, don't tell anyone. <laughs> so he walks off across the dog park up the hill. And we go down to the corner. And we think, well, you know, there's this busy intersection. We figure that, well, there are enough cars going by. We'll just kind of wait a while for the traffic to clear. And maybe the police will drive by. And sure enough, a cop car comes up just at that moment. We flag them down. They roll down the window. And we say, we've just been mugged. There's this guy. And they see him as he's crossing the crest of this hill. So the car peels around the corner, jumps the curb, starts driving across the park up the hill. And we see the mugger and then the car disappear on the other side of the hill. And we figure, we'd better stick around, because they're probably going to need a statement from us or something after they catch the guy. And we stand around, and we're waiting. And just then, we hear <laughs> So we thought, better wait at my apartment. So we call the police. <laughs> call the police. And about an hour, they, an hour later, they come and they pick us up. And they take us back to the station to get the statement. It turns out when they were searching later the scene where the shootout occurred, they found down an alleyway there was this dumpster. And in the dumpster, there was a hooded sweatshirt. And in a pocket of the hoodie, there was a keychain. And on the keychain, there was a photo. And it was a photo of the guy. So it made it pretty easy to find him. Uh, and then we met the two other witnesses who saw what happened on the other side. And it turns out at the same time that we were walking on this side of the dog park from the store, there was another guy leaving the store on the other side of the dog park. And he sees a guy running down the hill and then a police car jumping over it and down kind of streets of San Francisco style. And old TV show. And, <laughs> and he sees the, the guy turn around, shoot back at the car, and that's when he ducks behind a tree. And there's a woman who is also watching from a second floor window. And she sees that when the guy shoots at the car, the police come to a screeching halt. They hop out. They start shooting back at the guy. He shoots at the cops again. Officer down. Officer down. Officer slipped in dog shit. <laughs> <laughs> 
So <laughs> they catch the guy. Needless to say, it wasn't too hard to find him. Uh, and it turns out he wasn't innocent. In fact, he was on parole for attempted murder. And that is my story. <laughs>